hello hello what's up today i'm going to show you how to do anti-aliasing in post and uh, you can already see this horrible footage in the background and we are going to try to make it a bit less horrible and uh, to do that we'll first get a custom tool custom filter sorry and uh, what this does is it takes an average over these nine pixels that you see right here on the right perform a weighted average by giving them a higher number which we are not going to do but what we are going to do is we are going to reduce the pixels in the outer corners to zero what you can immediately see is that this kind of sucks it just looks like um, blurred edges basically like blurred jagged lines it still looks like jagged lines and it's still kind of horrible but we can actually improve this quite substantially and uh, what do we want to do here exactly well, if you look on the graphic on the left, you can see that there is a bit of a green background and then there is something in white. And you can see that there's again our jagged line. And we really only want to select the two pixels encased in red and leave all the other pixels be and only smooth those. And then it'll be probably quite a bit better. So we need an effect mask and we need to do exactly what we did right now. But we only want to apply it to these pixels. And in order to do that, we will use a custom tool. All right, let's get our custom tool and we will need two of these numbers, number one and two, which are referred to as N1 and N2 in our later equations. And we need two of these setups. And the reason we need these setups is, which you can already guess, we are going to look at a current pixel and then we will move by one. And then we will check this pixel. And how do we move one pixel? Well, Fusion uses a normalized coordinate system that goes from zero to one no matter what, which means if we want an individual pixel, we need to divide one by the height and width of the screen to get whatever float representation there is for one pixel. We do this by first taking one over the width and then we take one over the height and the H and the W are already defined by Fusion. And if I write W, it'll know that it's the width of my image. So if it's 4K image, it'll take that width. And if it's a 1080p image, it'll take that width. Now, the only other page we will need here is we'll go directly to the channels and right now, this just outputs everything exactly as before. And this is where we will need to modify it such that if you go back to here, only the two pixels encased in red are white and everything else needs to be black so that I can then use it as an effect mask. So what are the checks that I need to perform? And let's go back to the middle graphic here. Well, I need to check whether these, whether pixel one and pixel three are the same right here. And then I need to check whether these two are different, because if they are all the same, then there's no anti-aliasing, then there is no aliasing, which means I don't need to do anything. And if these two are not the same, then there is no continuous line. And again, there's no aliasing, so I don't need to do any anti-aliasing. So these are the two checks I need to perform. And I could perform a check between pixel one and C, but I don't need to because obviously these two need to be the same anyway for anything to happen. And uh, then I just need to do that for all possible combinations. So for this one as well, and for this one as well, and for this one as well. And respectively, I need to do a check right here as well to make sure that uh, they are different from my current pixel, but they diagonally, they need to be the same. I hope that's clear. So we need to write that in some kind of uh, mathematical expression that we can put in our custom tool for each individual channel. All right, so I've already written all of this down. And this all looks kind of complicated, but just ignore pretty much all of it. Just focus on this one line right here. And what you can see right here is all I'm doing is I'm checking is top right. So I'm checking whether the two pixels on the top right are the same, which are pixel one and pixel three. And then I check is right, which just asks whether my current pixel is different than pixel three. And if both of those are true, then this is just one. And then I have this separated into four checks for the po four possible diagonals. And if one of them is true, all of them are true because of this operator right here in the middle. What we now need to do is we just need to define what these variables are. And the way we do this is with the function of uh, get C1B, except that C usually refers to the current channel, but we are not allowed to do that for some reason. We have to replace it with the actual channel we are putting it in. Down here, you can see the get C1B has been replaced with the get R1B, which is the red value, and then here with green and here with uh, blue for each respective channel. And um, all I'm doing right here is I'm getting the value of a pixel. I'm taking one pixel to the right of me and I'm subtracting it right here from the pixel that is above me. And this means I'm checking the top right and I subtract both of them and I take the absolute value so that this can only be positive. And I'm saying this needs to be below a certain value, meaning basically if they're very similar, then this will be a small number and I can decide how similar they need to be by controlling N1, which is my number one input, right? Now I also need to check the is right 
which is just my current pixel, which you see right here. I make no modifications to my X and Y values, which is the X and Y value of my current pixel. And um, then I go one to the right, as I did before as well, by just taking my X value and adding one pixel, which was my setup one expression that we added earlier. And I say they need to be different, right? So they need to be above a certain number. And this is my second input, which we will also need. Now, all I need to go and do is I need to take all of these and copy them in here. And uh, there's one more thing that you really need to watch out for, which is that there needs to be a parenthesis around these two so that basically it checks this first and then it checks this. And then these results get compared with one another through this operator. The reason for this, I don't quite know. I would have thought that if you just go from left to right, it would work out, but it just doesn't work for some reason. So uh, through troubleshooting, I figured out that this is what I needed to do. And the alpha channel will remain untouched. And I will put all of these expressions in the comments so that you can just copy them. So now I just need to go and copy all of these over. And um, all I really need to do here is these are still at zero and I need to set these to some reasonable value. I found that this kind of works out like this. And this takes a while to process. What it should be doing is that the red pixel right here and the black pixel right here are white and everything else is black. And what you can see is that it does exactly that. If I zoom out and I check some other points, you can see that this actually works out kind of fine. And now I just need to add a bitmap to turn whether something has a high value or low value in a color into a mask. And the way to do this is to just pull these together so that it's either black or white. And now I put this up here, but for some reason it's not really working right now. And the reason for that is probably that I have alpha selected instead of luminance. So now just take the luminance values and it puts these into some kind of a mask and I get to use these to have an effect mask. And if you now look at this and you compare it to what we had originally, which I can put on this side right here, you can see that this is just a complete blurry mess and completely ruined. And this actually still has some sharpness in it. And if I start scrolling out, you can still see how soft this is. I'm not sure if it's coming across on YouTube. And this one looks a lot sharper and the lines look just as jaggedy, but they are less jaggedy than they looked originally. If I compare it to the original file, you can see that these are completely clear jagged lines. And if I start going to the right here, you can see that this is softened up a little bit. If you want to make a macro out of this, which I can only recommend if you are going to use this at all, I feel like it runs a bit more smoothly. All you do is select create macro, but I will select this one since I've already done it. And all you need to select here is image one and the output. And down here, my threshold one and threshold two, which will be your number one and number two, which will be up here. And then select the standard values, maybe a bit lower, more like this and this. And then you say yes. All right, I get that there isn't a massive change, but it is an improvement. And I think it does make the footage a bit less bad. And uh, if you liked it, I don't know, write a comment or something. See you later.